Hi, I'm John, and this is a demonstration of the deterministic physics engine I've been working on. Right now, I have set up four players playing the same game. Commands are sent rather than positions, rotations, etc. So the simulation on all clients has to be exactly the same. Because I'm working on a real-time strategy game, the demonstration is set up with selections and move clicks, but the physics engine can be used for many other types of games like 2.5D shooters, tower defense, MOBA, and pretty much everything that could use bandwidth efficiency and a high performance 2D physics engine. So without further ado, this is uh, four players playing the same game right here as I mentioned before, each with 225 units, totaling at 900 objects being simulated four times on my computer. The fans are going a bit crazy right now, but the simulation, every simulation, runs very smoothly. Right now, the units are a bit cluttered up right now. You don't know whose is whose. So I'm going to be organizing them. Uh, I'm going to drag every single unit, move them to their each unit's player's respective corner. So top left units will go to the top left. Yeah, let's get these guys below right here. Top right will, of course, go to the top right. Bottom right, his units will go to the bottom right. And last but not least, the guy who's still up in everyone's business, bottom left will go to bottom left. All right. Let's get all the bottom left units to the bottom left. And then, as you can see, there's not a hair out of place on all clients, except for these guys, who for some reason are still in top left area when they should be in bottom left. Oops. Okay. <clears throat> So let's uh, examine top left units first. I mean, there there's nothing that should be out of order. Um, all units of, bot of top lefts, all units of everybody's are in the exact same place on all players' instances. Uh, as you can see, this unit right here jutting out is jutting out in the same place on everyone else's computer, Every on everyone else's instance of the game. They're on the same computer. <laughs> so I've shown you what the physics engine can do with circle colliders, uh, which are, I mean, it's impressive, I think, because there's many units and everything's being simulated deterministically on four players, but it's still not as great as having polygon colliders, which is what I will show next. Let me just quit all these instances and open the rectangle test. All right. The thing about polygons is that they have to be, uh, every single edge has to be checked against every other unit's edge if they're in the same partition, which um, I will explain in later videos, the Cohen system. But basically it, it, it's, it's a lot more expensive to test uh, if two polygons are colliding than if uh, two circles are colliding. Two hundred and twenty-five objects can still be simulated with ease on my computer, and uh, it's actually running more smoothly than nine hundred circles. So there's there's not too much worry. I mean, 
it, it wouldn't be wise, I think. I wouldn't recommend uh, having 900 polygons uh, simulated in four instances. Polygons are, are ideally used for buildings and special units, maybe a tank or something. That, that's not mass-produced. Uh, like I said, 225 units, easily simulated. All right. So that, that's pretty much the end of the demonstration of the physics engine. I have some uh, more, more things to talk about. Oh, those jumps right there is um, part of the lockstep framework that that I implemented for this demonstration. It basically, it needs a packet, every single instance needs a packet to advance to the next frame. So if there's not a packet uh, for frame 1000, it can't go past frame 1000. It will get stuck there until it gets that packet. And what this does basically, is it ensures that everyone has this exact same simulation. So when, when uh, the packet is missing, it just pauses. Let's see, in my opinion, one of the most powerful parts of this physics engine is how accessible and controllable it is. To simulate a frame, all someone has to do is call physicsmanager.simulate, dphysicsmanager.simulate. One could drop that method into a uh, fixed update in Unity or tie it in with the custom event system. Another notable aspect of the physics engine, as I mentioned before, is that it's deterministic. It uses Fixed point math, uh, which the library is also included and in, will be included in the asset store package. And that is completely cross platform deterministic. So, very, very nice if you don't want to send positions, you want to send commands. I'm planning on releasing this physics engine on the asset store maybe uh, early summer this year. And the beta will be released sometime this weekend. I'm still polishing up the code, make it, making it more readable and making it more accessible for beta testers. I'm, I'm not sure uh, whether or not I should release the lockstep framework, which is, which is sending commands and whatnot, the unit selections and the, the box selections in this, in this demonstration right here, because it can get very technical and I'm not sure it'd be as useful for developers as, uh, as, as a general purpose physics engine. So in the meantime, if you're interested in creating a lockstep framework yourself, I highly recommend using the highly flexible and easy to use Darkroof servers, which I've linked below, and also reading the article, which I've linked below as well, which will describe how a lockstep framework works. So yeah, that's the end of the demonstration. If you're interested in testing the beta, I posted a link that provides more information, or you can email me at the email that I posted in the description. Thanks for watching. Happy developing.